Good morning guys and welcome to this new tutorial here on my YouTube channel. In this video I will show you two simple steps on how you can improve your power jibes. But not only that, before we get into the steps I will try and unlearn the jibe myself to then relearn it together with you guys. So like this you will hopefully see yourself at some point in this video and for me the best case would be that at the end of the video you can take something away that you try yourself in your next windsurf session. Before we get to the tutorial, we will check out the conditions. So this, guys, is the Lake Kospuden. It's my home spot. It's right next to where I live. And as you can see, the wind is just kicking in and the forecast is medium nice, I would say. It says 15 to 20 knots. And right now, yeah, we maybe have six to 16 knots. But judging by how it looks, I will rig a little bit of a bigger sail just so we have enough power for the jibes. Now let's go to the van and we talk a little bit about the gear before we get to the technical part about the power jibe. So guys, this is my van. And now about the equipment topic. First of all, it's extremely chaotic because we've been to an event, the Damex in the Netherlands. And so far, with all honesty, I was too lazy to <laughs> bring this back in order. The board that I'm gonna use today is my 117 liters slalom board, Dark Horse. It's a medium board and it's quite easy to jibe. And I'm gonna combine that with my 7.8 AC1, quite a big sail. And of course, the bigger the sail gets, the harder it is to maneuver and to jibe. So if you want an easy time to learn the jibe, I would recommend you to take a medium sized board and the smaller you can choose the sail, the better. But of course you need power. So what I will do now, of course, is rig my equipment the best way possible. And this would be way too much uh, for this tutorial to now explain how to trim it the right way. And I just want to quickly emphasize that no matter what you're trying to learn on the water, whether it's a tack, it's a jibe, it's a jump, no matter what it is, a good trim is the baseline for whatever you're learning out there because it makes everything so much easier. Play around with your trim, but for this topic I can recommend you my last tutorial. It's linked down in the video description below and it's basically about five simple steps on how you can improve your speed and control. And if you get that right, trust me, the rest will come so much easier to you, it's no comparison. Now I will rig up and we see each other down at the beach to do some really, really bad jibes to then relearn the jibe and do some good ones. I'm now gonna go out for the first session. I really hope that the wind is enough. because I will now unlearn or try to unlearn the power jibe. And I thought a little bit about what constitutes a bad jibe. And for me, it's really to be scared and by being scared, become as stiff as possible and try to slow everything down as much as I can and just freeze. So I will try and do exactly that now on the water. I'm not sure if I can get um, all the, the other technique that took me years and years and years of learning out of my head. I'm not sure if I'm gonna fall in straight away, but like this, I think we can do some, some bad jibes already. So be stiff. I'm good at being stiff. <laughs> my girlfriend behind the camera is uh, cringing a little bit. <laughs>
So guys, I'm back from the water. I originally planned to go just for five minutes, do some bad drives and come back. Now I've been on the water for 30 minutes, but it felt very difficult for me to, um, to do what I had in imagination. So I want to put as much weight as possible on the back of the board and at the same time be as stiff as possible. But I've been working on doing the opposite of that for 10 years now, basically. So it's not that easy. And I didn't fall into the water as well, um, which I also wanted to do, but I also didn't want to fake anything. So the first learning was that once you know how to jibe, it's hard to unlearn the jibe. But I have to say I did one jibe where I felt like I almost did it right to do it wrong. And, and if the conditions were more choppy and a lot more windy, then I think these jibes would look much better. Before we now get to the first step to fix these jibes, um, I just want to say that I thought on the water, okay, what am I doing wrong? Why is it, why is it not going uh, wrong? <laughs> it's a little bit hard to get in this mindset. And the thing that I did is I had quite long arms and although my, I was stiff and I was on the back of my board, I put pressure on the mass base. We will get to this topic in the second step, but this is why I was almost able to still plane through these bad jibes because the pressure was still on the mast base. Maybe later today I will do some more bad jibes and then uh, release the pressure from the mast base, but it is so hard to do all of these things at the same time. And with that being said, guys, now it's about you and we get to the first step. about the first of two steps that I'm explaining to you in this video. And one small thing, this is not a full-on power jibe tutorial, how you make a planing power jibe with every single detail. For this video, I had the idea to make it as simple as possible and to find two things that you actually can do in your next session to just improve your power jibe. The result of this video will not be a perfect power jibe and you can do one thing at a time. Both of these things are very simple and you can do them the next time you go on the water. So the first simple, actually very simple step is to do the opposite of what I told you in the beginning. You, will, you want to go down in your knees as much as you possibly can. And often when people ask me about what can I do better with my jibes and I'm saying, yeah, you go into your knees to feather off that chop, to slide through the water, to get more control, to make it easier for yourself, to put more pressure on the mass space, which are all things that almost happen automatically as you go into the knees, what people usually do is something like this. And this is not going into your knees. People come from this and they go to this. And this is because when you're a beginner, you are super scared all the time and every tiny change feels like a huge thing, especially when you learn a complicated maneuver like the power jive. So the first simple step is, the next time you go on the water and you practice your power jibes, you do something like this. You go, actually deep into your knees. You sail, you put your back foot in the middle of the other side of your board between the two straps, and then you go down in the knees and you really try to go low. Go lower as it feels comfortable for you guys because that is usually the part when it actually gets right. And this is very difficult to learn in the beginning because it's, it gives you a very different feeling. Things might feel faster. When you do it a few times, it will be very hard to unlearn as I just also realized and now the wind is kicking back in. So what I'm gonna do now is go deep into my knees. But guys, of course, I'm still gonna try and keep all that weight at the back of my board. So I'm not gonna do both of the steps at once. And I will see how that makes my jibes look. Let's go.
from the water. Unfortunately, the wind dropped quite a bit, so at the end I wasn't even able to plane anymore. But before that, I did, I think, four or five jibes, and I tried to go as low as possible. And what that did was it gave me the ability to feather off the chop a little bit more. My board went much smoother through the water. I also did the jibes a little bit further out, where there is a little bit more, you know, you can't call it wave, but it's like this high chop and it already can make jibing more complicated. So this is really the first step and it's quite simple, but it does not only give you more control over the board. It also has a big influence on what I will explain you in a moment in the second step, because as you go lower, you automatically also sheet your sail a little bit more in and you pull a little bit on your boom. And this gives pressure on your mass base. And so before I went out now, I told you that I will try to put all my weight at the back of the board, but that actually became quite hard as soon as I went down low into the knees. And now let's talk about step number two that will bring your power jibes to the next level. Amigos, we went through a little time lapse. It's two months later. Uh, unfortunately, I got quite sick for more than eight weeks and I, uh, yeah, I couldn't really talk. I couldn't do any sports. So uh, these are all things that are very bad for making windsurf YouTube videos, obviously. But after some back and forth, I decided to finish this video up, although this is not the finish that you probably hoped for, but we still have to talk about step two. Um, this time in the studio, I'm gonna take some old footage of mine from some jibes that I did this year because out there it's now snowy and um, yeah, it's, and it's uh, not so pleasant to train jibes. And if you want to see some uh, winter windsurf action, um, I'll link you a video at the end of this one. This is really, you really have to want this. I can barely feel my hands. And of course, to not miss any of the future videos on this YouTube channel, you should definitely subscribe. And if you enjoy this one, leave me a thumbs up and give me your feedback in the comments below. Step two is basically the reason why I uh, failed to mess up the first jibes uh, on the day I filmed the first half of the video, which is no, some time ago. <laughs> but it's the pressure that you put on your mass base during the jibe. And understanding the concept of exactly that is the key for basically every good jibe that you see out there. Of course, alongside many other things like the timing, uh, when you shift your sail around, when you switch your stance and so on. So about the pressure. When you are a beginner who is trying to learn the power jibe, one of the most done mistakes is to open up the sail when entering the jibe to not keep all that power when you carve because that can feel quite scary and it makes everything a little bit faster. And what this classical beginner jibe mistake does is it relieves the, the pressure on the mast base. The back of your board sinks down, your nose rises up because you relieve that pressure on the mast base and you lose all the control that you had before when you were going in a straight line. And this, to many of you guys out there, may sound very simple, but for jibe beginners, this is one of the most difficult things to learn, that when you go into the jibe, you sheet in. And now a quick explanation of how you do that. The first thing is you go low. This was step one and this is something that you can quite easily implement and if you go out for a few sessions it will feel quite natural to you and it will be very hard for you to go back to standing stiff on your board because you will be like why the hell would I stand stiff on my board. Now the second thing to gain more control is as I said putting that pressure on the mass base and one of the simplest things you can do is combine two movements. You bring your hands a little bit to the back when you're entering the jibe, meaning your front hand, it goes a few centimeters before your harness lines and your back hand moves a little bit back. That's the one thing that you do. 
The second thing that you do is you sheet in your backhand a little bit and you just a tiny little bit while doing that extend your arms forward. Now when you combine these two things you get pressure on your mast base and of course you have to experiment a little bit with that because you have to learn yourself in how much wind do you sheet in how much but if you learn the simple step uh, meaning the concept of the importance of pressure on your mast base you will progress so much you cannot imagine and the thing is this very simple idea of the pressure on the mast base and how that keeps your board on the water is very counterintuitive and you can the next time you go on the water pay some attention to what you are doing in your jibe when you're entering the jibe are you releasing the pressure are you using the pressure and you will realize that once you get a little bit of a feeling for these things you can first of all play around with it and second of all you will come to the next boundaries within your jibe and these boundaries of course will be things like shifting your sail switching your foot stance choosing the right path to jibe but guys to get to these steps i would recommend to you to take it slowly try these two simple steps and then go from there if you're failing to make good jibes don't be too harsh on yourself it takes a very long time to plane through a jibe but the good thing at the same time is that almost everybody is able to do it so also if you're not the youngest and you haven't been able to plane through your jibes for the past 30 years which there are quite a lot of people like that at our lake here for example then don't pressure yourself too much try to go step by step and from there you will have the speed and the control and the entry of your jibe to master the rest of the jibe and with that being said guys i have to say that's it if it maybe inspired you to try this during your next session of course your like is welcome your feedback in the comments if you have any questions if you have more um, steps that people can take, you know, put it all in the comments below because a lot of people are reading the comments. If you're looking for a surf shop, new board, new sale, anything like that, or simply some advisory, you can contact us at the Wind Lounge. It's linked down in the video description below. And here you find a nice, nasty, disgusting winter windsurfing video. Bye bye guys. See you next time.